my name is Chris Bogner. So I wanted to get involved this year with um, taking a couple guys hunting and I thought it would be a, a good idea to take a couple of my old teammates hunting. Chris Bogner really helped put this hunt together really well. Um, he got linked up with an organization called Mohawk Outdoors. The mission of Mohawk is to get combat veterans out into the woods and hunting together and like doing the healing process together of hunting and the camaraderie help help reinstate it not that our, our guys are hurt or you know weak we're all warriors and uh getting out here to do this really like brings it back out in us and it's awesome and it's been a great organization it really got to bring us all three together you know kurt from ohio me from colorado and chris from montana all together in one spot for a week of just fun adventure and mohawk has been an outstanding organization as far as the support they've given us out here both pd and kurt put in for antelope and only kurt uh, drew his tag but i was really excited uh, just to take those guys to where i grew up in southeastern montana um, they got to see a little bit of the area that i grew up hunting so I grew up in Medina, Ohio, which is like 45 minutes south of Cleveland, a uh, small farming area, and I was always an avid shooter, and I hunted deer, but nothing compared to this. It's absolutely ridiculous how, how vast this country is. Me and Kurt became really close. We were in the same squad for a while, and then, then he ended up being in a different squad, but we were always together on deployment. He was actually there the day that I got hit by an IED and uh, was a crucial role player in uh, making everything happen to get me out of there. When I went to 1st Battalion, 7 Marines, I already came back from a real bad deployment, so I didn't want to make too many friends, but uh, Chris and I became real close. And we were patrolling. He was in the front squad, and I was right behind him in the second squad. We heard an explosion, saw a big black puff of smoke come up you know, automatically knew from previous deployment that uh, what happened. At the time, I didn't know who it was, and I was just praying that it wasn't Chris, but sure enough, you know, it was the, the person I wanted at least to be. And I got a phone call from Kurt, and he went over like how, what happened, who was down, and you know, what was going on. And my very first thing I did is I, I got immediately got on the internet and sent Chris a message. I was like, hey bud, when you get home, I'm coming to see you no matter what. I'm gonna be there. And I was unfortunately tied up at the time when he got back into the country and he was in Maryland and I was in Camp Pendleton, California. But uh, somehow, somehow, some way, I was able to get his mom's cell phone number and I called him and I was able to talk to Chris and right when he got home and that was really cool. Yeah, so I picked picked my friends up from the airport and as soon as I picked them up, we went straight to uh, the range. Just got everybody picked up at the airport and we cruised out here to the Bridgers to get everything sighted in. I'm gonna go for the second one down on the left. Okay. We got it all dialed in, ready to get up early and get the antelope. Now we got about a four hour drive ahead of us and then we'll hit the antelope hard in the morning. This segment of Trophy Hunters TV is brought to you by Swagger Bipods, the bipod with moves. So we're like down here now. Go straight up past all this yellow. Hopefully we see something. Dude, they're everywhere. Another decent one over there by himself. See the right one in the back. 
there's two bigger ones. I saw a couple really good goats, but they're on private. They kind of forced the public, but they're going the wrong way right now. So we're gonna mark a waypoint on the GPS and maybe come back and see a few things bigger that we want. Let's see if we can get them all riled up again, Petey. So we're about to just go over this ridge here and see what we can see. Um, pretty good spot. Seen a lot of antelope here this year. So hopefully we got some luck. Everything that we have seen this morning has pretty much been on stuff we can't hunt. So here we go. So yeah, we uh, came over this hill, this real small hill. And I'd say about 20 yards coming over there, we see a a good antelope on our left. If you have a, about a 10 degree wind, or 12, yeah. maybe 15 wind here. <laughs> really? Do you think you'll circle back? Might. It's a long shot with this wind now. If you feel comfortable, you can still take it. No impact, no idea. No, don't shoot again. I wouldn't even. No. No. You missed twice there. So much wind, dude. I couldn't even see where that hit. I know it didn't hit him. <laughs> You're a good dude. That that wind is crazy. Didn't see where the bullet impacted. It's just so windy out here. It's hard to judge where your your holdovers are. But uh, we're gonna keep looking. See if the circles around, or or keep looking for the next one. The wind in eastern Montana is crazy. I've never shot in wind like that in my life. And it was, you know, 30 to 50 mile an hour winds. Like, realistically, it was, it was unbelievable. Our antelope hunting was a little bit different than usual, um, mainly because of the wind. It was like 40 to 50 mile per hour winds. And so we did a lot of, uh, a lot of road hunting trying to glass glass something from a ways away so we can make a stock on it and <clears throat> this is right here where's where I saw that big one but I mean if we wanted to get back in there we'd have to go on the state section and walk all the way and that's a long walk in wind yeah so we had seen uh, a lot of antelope um, but the antelope kind of seemed to know the game they were sticking on to some private land that we didn't have permission on later on in the day we got uh, I contacted a local rancher when we saw some antelope out there and he gave us permission. Oh, there this. I don't see him, I see them. He's on this side, he just went down into this bottom there. So the first antelope stock we gotta put on the, put on them, it was really cool. We gotta actually kinda do some bumping and bounding like a fire team does. The three of us just like, never it's like we never left the marine corps we were just right there with each other um just communicating like really non-verbally using hand signals and just knowing what your buddy's going to do and a lot of that falls back on our training it's like eight antelope down there over this ridge one possible shooter. We're uh, trying to judge to see how big he is and how we're gonna go after him. He's still pretty far ways out. I wish we could see up that gut, you know? Yeah. I bet, I bet he's down there, I can almost guarantee it.
This segment is provided by Big and J. The aroma is super strong, the range is super long. Just wait him out, see what he does. I just don't, I, cause I can't, if you shoot him, he's gonna go, he's gonna run that way and I can't have him going over that ridge. Yeah. And any, you know, and any other time I would let you do it, but the wind's so bad, if you miss and hit him and then he runs over there, we can't go over there, so. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll just wait and watch him for a while. Yeah. <clears throat> just came out down on that buck that we were putting a stock on and he was uh, maybe in range but it's pretty windy and then he property goes. lines right up there so he can't do much about it so we're gonna back out hopefully uh, catch something on the way out with a little bit of light left the next day we go back to the same ranch and we find even more antelope we're over where we need them to be <laughs> Hopefully over there. We've got another herd over this mountain where we were yesterday. Uh, super windy again, so I'm gonna grab my other gun. It's got a little heavier bullet. Hopefully that'll help us out. And we know from where we were the day before that you know that's a still a very long shot, so we need to get closer. You see this creek bed? The one behind that is where we're thinking we're gonna try and get to. Yeah, I heard they're in the other group. Okay. Came over to get a look at these 20 antelope. We're gonna sneak up here and see if we can get a shot off at one of them. It's really windy. It's kind of blowing in our face, but a little crosswind. So we're gonna see if Kurt can reach out and touch somebody with, a, with this bigger gun. So I dialed up to where my 400 mark was. I'll just aim on his back. Are you on him, Chris? He's in the back. He's down. He's dead. He's down. Good shot. Nice shot. Should I pump him again? He's done. Great, good nice shot, man. Did you hear what I was telling you when I said bush two tenths of a I didn't know you were shooting on the first shot. I'm like, oh, and then I got him right in the sight. <laughs> good job, buddy. Oh, there he is. That's a good one. I had to hold at least one mil over. The wind gusts here about 45. That was the first shot, took his, took his back end out, but uh, this one sealed the deal. You know, I never done anything like this before. Got some whitetail in Ohio where I, where I grew up, but out of state wise, this is my first antelope. First time ever being around one. <laughs> so thanks to Chris for making this all happen. I was not just happy for him, but I was happy to see that he was happy. Like he was so excited and that that's really what it's all about. Just got an antelope. Now we're uh, going to get in the truck and then we're going to get up early in the morning and hunt some bear in western Montana. Got up here, found our campsite for the night. We've got some good opening areas back on the, down this hill and back off this other side. Um, good clearings, we're, we're ready to go. It's gonna be a good time.
I had to step back and be like, okay, now I'm not trying to hunt a prey species. I'm hunting the top apex predator of the, of the area. It was a real significant change in my mindset. Oh, I really like that ridge too, because you got that dark timber coming up, but it doesn't go all the way. Opens up real nice. Yeah, so we wanted to, we wanted to cover as much ground as we could. Um, there's quite a bit of roads where we were. Um, so we would get down onto some roads and then we'd glass, but we wouldn't spend entirely too much time on one area. We'd get up and we'd go, we'd glass another area, we'd move to the next, and we just kept doing that, trying to cover as much ground as we could. Just found our first grizzly bear track up here. You can definitely tell the difference on the size compared to a black bear, just so much bigger. Um, pretty cool to see it. Hopefully we'll get a glimpse of him, but Either way, it's pretty cool to see it. There's something down there. I can't tell what it is. It's brown. You're sitting there, and if there's times you got your back turned to some thick woods because you're trying to draw them in through the clearings, and you don't know, like that call's going, that bear could come in from any direction. So you gotta always be on your six. So we got set up down here this morning, got our call up. We probably spent the last hour and a half, two hours calling. Uh, didn't really get much for a call back. Many of the animals didn't get any movement, so we're gonna go ahead and pick up and move from here and head back down the mountain and kind of go see what we can find. Yeah, it's, it was everything you could ask for. Um, just looked like bear country. We're not too far off the top of the mountain, but we wanna try and get a little bit higher so that we can find our optimal spot to get some glass going. The moment's gone, the deed's been done. Chef took a drop shot in a blood red sun. The crack of a thunder shook the ground betrayed. There's an outlaw coming, and he's coming this way. There's an outlaw coming. And he's coming this way. One of the last hunts we did, we got up on this knoll and it was right on the divide of like two really nice draws. We had good clearings coming all the way to the top and we're like, man, this is gonna be an awesome hunt. The wind's in our face, the sun's in our back, so it's, we've done everything on our end that we can do to set up for this. We set up a call in, in the bowl so it echoes out and there's sign of wolves in the area, coyotes, we're like, you know, we're. We're gonna get them. And we called and called, you know, and we ran out of daylight and it was getting pretty dark and we're on our way out and something crashed below us so could have been an elk could have been a deer could have been a bear we don't really know didn't get eyes on it but it was still pretty an exciting hunt kurt ended up getting his antelope but we didn't see a bear or a wolf but um really uh the trophy experience was being with kurt and pd this whole time and reconnecting with with them talking about stuff we actually hadn't talked about before and it was uh really comforting my trophy experience was just that, reinstating that camaraderie that we all developed years ago and uh, getting to spend time together and do the things we love.